With people going out more, there's a growing demand for workers at restaurants and FMB outlets. In a much-awaited move, Keppel ONM and Semcorp Marine are merging to form a major global player. And Team Singapore heads to the SEA Games in Hanoi next month with no medal target. It's 5.30pm here in Singapore. You're watching The Big Story with me, Hairian Todiman. Subscribe to the Straits Times channel so you will not miss a single episode. As Singapore moves beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, flexible work arrangements look set to become the norm. In his May Day message released today, Manpower Minister Tan Si Leng said, with a global shift in employer and employee preferences for flexible work arrangements, here in Singapore, employers, workers and the government aim to cover at least 4 in 10 workers under the tripartite standard on flexible work arrangements by the end of this year. And the partners will continue to support employers and workers to transition to such new modes of work. The partners will also work together to expand the progressive wage model to more sectors and occupations to cover up to 9 in 10 lower wage workers. Meanwhile, an advisory committee on platform workers is reviewing how to strengthen employment protection for delivery riders, cabbies and private hire car drivers. A High Court judge has reversed his decision to redact the names of six trainee lawyers who cheated in the 2020 bar exam. The six are Manisha Devaraj, Kushal Atul Shah, Sriram Ravindran, Lin Kwek, Matthew Chow and Lionel Wong. Justice Chu Hantek said there's been tremendous public interest in their identities since his initial judgment last week. And he is now of the view that it is better to face the publicity than to hide from it. With no group size limits and more people going back to the workplace, the dining crowds are expected to return to FMB establishments. But are these eateries able to cope with the demand? Well, previously, when the group size limit was raised to 10, FMB outlets expressed challenges in adjusting to the easing including reconfiguring their seating arrangement and hiring more workers. What challenges do they face now? With more is Andrew Chan, Honorary Treasurer of the Restaurant Association of Singapore. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Andrew, is there a labour crunch in restaurants? And if so, what are the reasons for this lack of manpower? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, I think definitely the manpower situation in uh, Definitely, I think not only for FMB, but I think across many sectors has been quite challenging. Uh, I think one of the largest uh, thing was uh, with the extent of, uh, I think while a lot of uh, restaurants, cafes, bars uh, are rejoicing with the hours that are largely extended from bars, especially from the 10.30, uh, having been able to serve drinks. So I think a lot of people are opening much longer hours. There's just generally a lot of demand for workers which are largely contributed by local workers as well as uh, foreign workers. I think the foreign workers situation uh, is getting slightly better, but I think also with a lot of opening and not only I think in Singapore, but regionally especially, I think it has kind of led to a lot of people who has uh, you know, not been back for, for many years to be able to finally uh, go back home, uh, <clears throat> which then kind of leads uh, to the situation whereby you know, a lot of uh, people are actually uh, going back, either deciding to go back and you know, hopefully some go back and, 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 and do come back. But I think some also have difficulty in terms of some of the quota measures that have already been implemented since last year. So. I think the DRC quotas have already, in a way, kind of like been shrinking, right? So uh, that kind of lead to, you know, having less uh, supply labor as well. But I think the, the, the large part of the, of, 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 the, of, of having that, that whole shortage is really in terms of that demand that almost every sector is kind of like, like taking back, right? Not only from <clears throat> the FMB sector, but also from the travel industries, 
uh, the airport's opening. So I think there's just great demand everywhere. And how are the restaurants coping, Andrew? Is it just making do with less and hoping that customers will understand? Mm. I, 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 think, I think since, since the last two years, I think uh, in, in a way, I think restauranteurs, uh, operators have all kind of like, you know, uh, been very dynamic in terms of how we've been handling the situation whereby you just kind of feel that there's uh, very little stuff. And I think in a way, customers have been, have been great in terms of uh, understanding the challenges that operators are facing and in a way, a lot more patient. Uh, I mean, we have been uh, kind of locked down quite a while and then now having a lot of things open up and where there's always that whole imbalance in terms of that whole uh, demand itself it kind of led to a lot of uh, maybe in terms of service you you are not able to get back exactly the same service but i think uh, operators and customers alike right i think we're all just uh, kind of happy that we're able to get back to our normal activities in terms of uh, being able to go out dine travel yeah everything i think most of us are kind of like coping based on whatever we have uh, trying to make the best of, of, of what we have. But I think uh, with some of the opening up, uh, I think some of the resources that we use to allocate, to, to do a lot of safety checks, uh, trace together, in a way have been kind of freed up. So I think there's a little bit of that balance in terms of shifting some of these uh, staff again, then be able to do what they, 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 they ultimately are, are paid to do. Uh, yeah, and then I think we're just trying to cope as best as we can. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for the insights. Andrew Chan from the Restaurant Association of Singapore. Meanwhile, in a further easing of COVID-19 rules since transitioning to endemicity on April 1st, Malaysia will remove testing protocols for inbound vaccinated travellers, as well as venue check-ins using the contact tracing app and safe distancing requirements. Mask wearing will also be optional in outdoor settings and open houses can be held for the upcoming Hari Raya holiday. Making the announcement today, Health Minister Khairi Jamaluddin says these changes will take effect on Sunday, May 1st. On to China's twin COVID-19 outbreaks, uh, Shanghai is hinting at an easing of lockdown measures as cases fell for a fourth straight day to its lowest in three weeks. According to a vice director at the Municipal Health Commission, the city will permit a limited movement for some groups of people in districts with no community spread. A previous round of similar easing, though, did little to materially free residents from their lockdown. Meanwhile, Beijing reported 34 cases yesterday as it tests millions of residents. Health authorities expect more infections to be found, but so far most of them fell, fall into two separate transmission chains. In other headlines, the Semcorp Marine and Keppel Offshore and Marine are merging to create what could be one of the world's largest offshore energy players with orders worth 6.4 billion Singapore dollars. The deal is subject to regulatory and shareholder approvals. Singapore's sports officials declined to declare a medal target for our athletes at next month's SEA Games in Hanoi, with Singapore Sport Institute Chief Su Chun Wei saying, quote, I emphasise that we don't want to focus on the absolute number of medals. Every athlete is going there to compete. The medal as a matter of process will follow. At the last edition in 2019, Singapore brought home 53 gold, 46 silver and 68 bronze medals. Russian energy giant Gazprom has halted gas exports to Bulgaria and Poland because they failed to pay in rubles. It's the first time that countries have had their gas cut off by Russia since its invasion of Ukraine. Russia is Europe's main gas supplier, accounting for about 40% of the EU's gas imports. A Myanmar court has sentenced Aung San Suu Kyi to five years in prison for corruption. The ruling means that the ousted state councillor will need to serve at least 11 years in prison. She's already serving a six-year term over charges that include incitement and breaching COVID-19 rules. 
US Vice President Kamala Harris, who tested positive for COVID-19 and has no symptoms, is being treated with Pfizer's antiviral drug Paxlovid. According to our office, Ms Harris has been vaccinated and boosted twice and has not had any recent contact with President Joe Biden or most of the White House staff. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Harianto Diman. See you tomorrow for more stories on The Big Story.